We're going to look at comps for a place in Maynard, Texas. There's a neighborhood called Hamilton Point Circle that I'm getting ready to list a home in. And so you want to you wanna always check to see what's active, to see what your current competition is, what's pending, to know what's actually uh, in the process of being sold, and then to know what's closed. And so that's what we're going to go through today because I can see what I can take a look at what's closed to decide how I want to list this home, which will put us in a really good ballpark uh, as to um, how aggressive and how quickly the home is going to move off the market. So I'm starting off, I'm going to go ahead and search. Remember, this is Maynard, Texas. Hamilton Point is the neighborhood. So I'm going to go ahead and search on the Austin MLS and look for single family homes only. Just like I had mentioned, I'm going to check all of these boxes, active, pending, uh, and closed. Let me start off, or let me make sure that I add in here that I am in the middle of the desert in Terlingua, Texas. Let me do a quick spin around just so you can see. Uh, and the reason why I want to show you that is because if things are moving a little slow. That's why. Um, okay. Next, I'm going to check to see. I've got the address. I've got the type of roof, all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to put any of that in yet. I'm just going to start from here and I'm going to put in a neighborhood or subdivision. So I can do Hamilton. Hamilton Point. And I'm just going to leave it at that. And notice at the bottom left, it gives me seven matches. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. So I've got seven matches, single family home. Great. Now I'm not restricting it by bedrooms or baths or anything like that. That's not necessary just yet. But this is what's important. Closed in the last zero to 90 days. This is the kind of stuff that if you're not if you don't understand how this is put together, then if you're looking on Redfin or Zillow or all those things, then you're going to have some misinterpreted data or an opportunity to misinterpret data. Okay, so first thing I did is I clicked on the map. That brings me to the neighborhood so that I can see what the, housey, the houses look like, where they are. So this is Hamilton Point. Notice right next to it is Wild Horse Creek. So really important point. If someone's looking to buy in Maynard, there are a lot of different neighborhoods. They might want to go to Wild Horse Creek and not Hamilton Point. Okay, If that's the case, there's going to be different property tax rates. There's going to be different styles of homes, maybe different builders. So we want to stick to the neighborhood that we're looking towards. And then once you get into the neighborhood, there's so many variables. Are they along the side of the road? Do they back up to something like maybe a farm or a school? Or is there a highway running through? Or is there water nearby? Right. So like this lot is a corner lot. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. It's not for sale, but you can see that this is a corner lot, it's really large, and behind it is essentially nothing, and then water. And it could be a retention pond, but my point is, you don't ever have to worry about anybody building anything behind you uh, from what we can tell so far. And this is not digging into any kind of uh, development plans for the city or anything. I'm just saying, like, at a first glance, that's what it looks like. Okay, so I see that there are a handful that are for sale, only one closed in the last 90 days. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to click on it. Closed for 283. It was a four bed, three bath. Let's take a look at this particular home and then we'll look at some of the others. All right, so it's a two story, 1700 square feet, four bed, three bath. I'm going to click on the home itself, 16224 Hamilton. And so it was built in 2003. It's interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. So it was listed at 162 a square foot ended up closing at, where are our numbers? At 164 a square foot. So it actually closed higher. That happens sometimes for a bunch of reasons. One, I mean, it happened a lot during the pandemic, but sometimes it'll happen because if there's a new buyer, let's say it's an FHA buyer or a conventional buyer that doesn't have a lot of down payment, uh, opportunity for down payment, or, they just want to lower their interest rate and help to buy that down. You can actually pay more for the house and use some of that extra money to buy down your interest rate. And as long as the appraisal matches, then everybody wins, right? The seller doesn't care because they're netting the same, maybe even a little bit more. And then the, the buyer is excited because they can get in a home. They might and may save uh, on their monthly payment a little bit. So this is really cool. Uh, tax rate is 2.95. Obviously, you want to keep that in mind. And then $120 annually. That's almost it's almost nothing for an HOA. I, I typically anticipate anywhere from $40 to $70 a month for an HOA 
if you're okay with an HOA in the state of Texas, uh, and that's, I mean, we have a lot of properties. If you're in a neighborhood, there's a high probability that if you're in the central, uh, central Texas, Austin area, or any of the suburbs, you're probably going to spend about that monthly on an HOA. And you maybe have 50% HOAs. HOAs do things like give you amenities, maybe some pool, maybe a pool, maybe they have a little uh, pocket park, maybe they have an amenity center, maybe they have walking trails, right? Maybe they have gas. It sounds interesting, right? Like not every neighborhood has uh, natural gas. Sometimes it's all electric. This particular one, let's take a look through the home itself. And the only reason I'm spending so much time on this particular home is because it's the only one that closed. Right. So, uh, OK, OK. So this is the number we have to work off of for the moment. I'm going to have to go left here. Actually, I'm going to. OK, so we see the size of the yard, the room. So notice it's carpeted floors. It's a neutral color backsplash. They did not change the what was it? 2003 cabinet colors. Oh, my gosh. I can't stand them personally, but it closed. Somebody bought it. Somebody bought it because it was the good a good price in the right neighborhood or the right price in the right neighborhood for them and their time to purchase. And that's all we can really do. We can't, we can't dictate other than making changes. We can't dictate what someone's going to pay for the home. And so, uh, because the location is the location. So looking at this, there's tile floors in the kitchen, a little breakfast nook. I can see that they did a good job with photos. Cause if you, you saw that last picture, it shows you exactly how, here, let me see if I can, Get this a little bit smaller. Get my face out of the way. So looking at this last picture, uh, you see how the, uh, I mean, they're okay. They're okay photos. Sorry, photographer. They're not that great. Um, okay, same thing with the cabinets in the kitchen. And then the countertop. Uh, it looks like that is some kind of artificial, maybe a Corian or a uh, Sile stone or something like that, but not necessarily a granite countertop. And I'm looking at it because of the, the that little ridge at the edge is uh, indicative of that but it is gas so if it's a gas a natural gas oven there's a high probability that every other home that's in this neighborhood has natural gas so if you are a cook or you just understand that gas is generally more cost effective in the state of texas today then that's uh that's something for you to consider in your in your offer prices all right, so we see how the kitchen is set up. We see that there's the, they updated the lights because they used to have those. In 2003, they had those, uh, those fluorescent lights above it. I'm guessing that's a pantry. There's an upstairs. Okay, so what, I'm, what I think I'm noticing is there's no bedroom downstairs. Yeah, so no primary bedroom, unless I'm wrong. Let me go back. Let me go back. So that's the kitchen. I think it's just the kitchen and the living room downstairs and no bedroom. This is vital to understand because many people don't want to have to run up and down the stairs. So the fact that this has is a two story and all the bedrooms are upstairs are going to be a consideration in when we list our home and the pricing because right now there's competition. Let's look at this competition. So let me go back and go to a single line here. So now this gives us our our competition. So there's one home this uh, 16829 Hamilton Point has been on the market. So over on the right, it's 308 days consecutively, 613 days cumulati cumulatively. Holy goodness. It's, a, it's just over 1,000 square feet, not even 12, uh, sorry, 1,100 square feet, listed at 289, which is $260 a square foot. Okay, so this is interesting. We've got one at 217, one at 514. 514 a square foot. What the heck is happening? It's been on the market for 50 days. This one's been on the market for 70 days at this point. And where are we? April 20th. So this is a four bed, two bath, this Geron. And then Parsons is a six bed, four bath. That is not a comp. That is not close to what we're looking at. I believe the one that we're referring to is a three bedroom, two bath. So if we're looking at a three bedroom, two bath, we've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. So if we were to average those out, it's looking without calculating, it's looking like maybe two, 250 a square foot would be an aggressive number. And the reason why I say aggressive is because you look at the anything that's under 260, these are all under 260 a square foot, they were gone in about two weeks. And when I say gone, they're active and pending, but they're not closed. So that means they received the contract, they're working through the negotiations, and then they're getting their financing done which is incredible. So in, if you want this uh, three bedroom, two bath home to move in the Hamilton 
uh, point neighborhood, then today you're going to have to price it around there. And this one was at 164 a square foot. It took two weeks, but it's probably because it's uh, that four bedroom, which is great, but all the bedrooms are upstairs, which is not so great. Okay, so that gives us a good idea. These are also smaller homes. Smaller homes generally uh, get a higher price per square foot. And so I think the, our subject property, the one we're looking at, is uh, a little higher square foot, right? So if it was, let's say it was 1,600, I think it's a 1,600 square foot. We're more in line with this, this 217 a square foot. But this one's been online 79 days on market, 252 cumulative days on market. Cumulative means a couple things. One, it could be that they put it on the market, took it off the market, it fell off the market. Maybe somebody, a buyer put in an offer and then their financing fell through. Maybe it went from one real estate agent who couldn't sell it to moving to another real estate agent who thinks they can do a better job selling it. But now it's also been a couple months. So let me click on this one and see what's going on. So this one, it's completely, it looks like it's completely renovated on the inside, which is already quite interesting. It's 16, almost 1700 square foot, but it's listed at 217 a square foot. I'm actually surprised that it's been sitting so long. I wonder why. It could just be, like I said, any of those things. It could have foundation issues. It could be bad marketing. It could still need a new roof, maybe new windows. It looks like windows have been touched here. So sorry, I've, I've got stuff flying around. <laughs> Once again, if you're just joining in, I'm, I'm on, uh, at Terra Lingua, which is just outside of Big Bend uh, National and State Parks. I'm going to give you another spin around here just so you can, can see. It's a uh, pretty much a ghost town. We've got uh, our friends and my wife in the camper here that we rented out Airbnb style. Okay. So let's see what we have. Very, very nice floors. I love this. This is vinyl plank, like this bamboo colored flooring. I like that. They, it looks like they replaced the windows, neutral color paint. Perfect. Uh, the cabinets were just paint. I think they were just painted over. It looks like, and some, some decent staging. They replaced the fixtures. Okay. They're putting some, they put some love into this to make it look really nice. It's actually surprising that it's not already gone. And this is, this is, uh, it's really bright out here. So it's really hard to see. My eyes aren't going bad. Or anything. <laughs> uh, it looks like the, the, the subway backsplash, they added some little handles and fixtures. They did a really good job put in the recessed lighting and then the new countertops, gas oven. And this, this type of job, didn't have to be a lot of money. It depends on what the flooring type is. If it's a vinyl plank, I mean, you might spend $5 a foot, a square foot, putting in some vinyl plank. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Pictures aren't loading. I hope I don't lose you. Okay, there we go. Uh, $5-ish a square foot, laying down some vinyl plank flooring, uh, tile, all that sort of stuff. You're not spending a ton of money, but we're back to, is it all the bedrooms are upstairs? I think that's it. I think that's it with this home. The bedrooms are all upstairs as well. And so it just, while the home could be done well and great, if all the bedrooms are upstairs, I can't really tell if this one, this looks like it's upstairs, but they showed the picture, right? You see how we're in the tree leaves. That's the thing. People try to be sneaky. They put it in order, but you get out there. You're like, there's no bedroom downstairs. Okay, here we go. So yeah, dining, living room. I love that they put the floor plan. That's actually really nice. That's very helpful. I like doing that with listings myself, uh, with my listings. Sky is nice. They did a good job editing the photos. Okay. So this gives us an idea. Again, bedrooms on the first floor kind of make a big difference. And so we're looking at all these houses. So the ones that have active and pending, we've got these. These are all single story homes. Okay. So that one that's a four bedroom is a two story home. So that makes more sense that it sat so much longer because it's so hard, especially when you're looking in that price range. Uh, maybe you're a first time buyer and you have, you just now having a, a baby, having to run up and down stairs, up and down the stairs with the kid. I don't think that's a lot of fun or worrying about your kids falling down the stairs. I don't know. People have all sorts of things uh, that they think through. So I, I hear all the conversations. So right now, this is a good indication that we want to be less than 260 a square foot and we should be able to go for our particular listing and we should be able to go not an issue. Now, I want to, I just want to look at this Parsons one because it's some ridiculous, it's an 86, five acres. That's what it is. All the other ones are less than a quarter acre. This is a five acre property. That's a big one. And then obviously just huge 
It's not even that large of a property. It just has a lot of compartmentalization, a lot of rooms, almost 3,000 square feet, 514 a square foot. I'm assuming they put in a pool or something. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. And then they completely renovated it, and they didn't just go, they cabinets all the way to the top. They put the cool backsplash, extended the counter, right, replaced This is a completely new home, even though it's built in 1978. I love the stone features. On, okay, we're not looking for this. This is not, this is not our focus right now. Pictures are great, too. Okay, but that, that gives us an idea as to why that one's listed for so much higher. So let me go back to the criteria. All I'm going to do is change the days on market and see. So right now we're in April. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it to 120 days to see if that gives us any more closed homes. It didn't. So this neighborhood doesn't have a lot of turnover. In fact, I'm going to take all these off and just look at closed homes. So we're at 120, let's say 150. Still one match. Interesting. There are not a lot of closed homes in this neighborhood in months. So I'm going to do 180. Okay, I'm just going to go I'm going to go full 365. In this last year, how many homes have closed in this neighborhood? One one single family home has closed in this neighborhood. Okay, so that gives me that. The next thing I'm going to do is uh wow. That is that's ridiculous. Let me do uh 600. Good then. Five matches. Okay. So now let's see what this looks like. I don't want to look at the mat. I, I want to look at single line. So that gives me the data. Okay. So this is over 600 days only in this neighborhood. Here's how many homes. So we've got uh, this Geron home. So let's see. They're all single stories. Single story homes close in this neighborhood. Two story homes are having a harder time. That's our answer. Uh, price per square foot. We we're looking at the close price per square foot and the list price. So this one's listed at 258, close at 248. So it actually didn't sell for as high, right? 10,000 less. And then we've got this one. It sold for a little bit less. This one sold for just slightly more. This one sold for a little bit less. So now we're seeing a pattern here, except for this one. This one was an even ask. So that gives us an indication of what kind of offers people were putting in at the time that they did it. Because this was in 2022, which doesn't really... That's not today. Uh, that's the other thing. A lot of people, they list their homes thinking, oh, well, I want to get 2022's numbers, right? I'm, so I'm going to list it here. It's like, no, or 2021 numbers. That does not fly. So this is, this is really good to see. I think we're still sitting pretty with an aggressive uh, less than 260 a square foot, maybe even a 255 a square foot, and still be able to move it within a couple of weeks and get a fair price, get a good offer, and we're we're all going to win. Uh, the buyer, the seller, everybody. So if you have any other questions on this or you want an analysis like this done on your home, uh, please hit me up. Uh, I go by Ian of Austin everywhere on the internet. Obviously, if you like this content, like, subscribe, press the bell icon, and I'm going to keep doing these in a bunch of different neighborhoods across the Austin area. Um, and I and I try to, I just, I want to make sure that I'm providing ample value for everybody because uh, these these videos take a little bit of time but this is the stuff that I already have to do, so why not record it, right? Let's make that benefit that I have to take the time to do it also your benefit. Uh, would love to work with you as a realtor. Take care. Have a good one. See you in the next video.